So just how have I managed to have objects stick to the ground and dynamically update? There's really two methods that I'm using. One of them is by, you know, using a ray casting and casting an individual object down and parenting things to it. And the other is the conform modifier. Let's just take a look at the ray casting method. First, I have this object here, and this is just sort of the main control object that if I move it around, you'll see in this case, the crate follows along with it. it stays angled to the ground as well. Just go to wireframe with F3 and select the point helper uh, at the base here. And this point helper, if I go over to the motion panel, and in uh, 2025, we've uh, got this uh, new um, ability to be able to handle all of our controllers, not just the um, transform um, and uh, you know uh, position rotation scales. We can handle all of them here. In previous, if you're trying this, you'd have to just go into the dope sheet or the you know um, track view to be able to control any track you want. We're working with position and rotation anyways. So if we go to the position controller here, what I did is I right clicked and said assign controller, rate a surface. And for the rotation, I clicked on it and I said, you know, assign controller, rate uh, surface orientation. And so with the position, all we've done is created the ray cast object. That's this object here, the one that we're casting the ray from. And its orientation matters. So if we take a look at it in the local, that was with a right uh, alt right click or changing it to local up here, you can see that Z is pointing up. And so with Z pointing up, we want to cast in negative Z. So flipping Z, let's point down. Now the rotation one uh, that we look at here is a little bit different. We need to set some other properties to be able to get it to work properly. So same thing, it's casting down from the same place. This time you're gonna be handling things like the up node axis, so which way is pointing up, the local up axis uh, of the object and forward axis of pointing along X. And you'll notice X is pointing out and over to this little point here. And if we're going to take that and, you know, change its values, you know, its position, it would change the orientation of this object in its up node, essentially. So that's set right here. It's pointing at it. And the reason it's pointing at it is we need that orientation to be able to stay pointing in the right direction when I rotate it. So, you know, we need to be able to set two vectors when we're dealing with rotations instead of just one. So that's one of the ways to do it. Now the uh, silo is using that very method and it has the same point in between. So once you've set up one, you can simply copy these points around and away you go. You can use it for all of them and it will work perfectly well. So once it's set up once, it'll always be set up. Now the silo does an extra little bit of colliding going on here. Uh, so the, it is colliding with the ground as we discussed previously with this tube object and it's pushing the ground up to make it look neat. Now the other method I'm using is with the new conform modifier that was added to uh, previous version and it's fantastic because we can do all kinds of stuff to conform one object to another. Now all these little rocks can become problematic to deal with all these I don't care, they're little things that they're maybe stretching a little bit with conform and they're not keeping their uh, you know, exact volume. It really doesn't matter that much. They're just little pebbles and rocks laying around. Now again, these have been created with you know, proceduralism. So it's a geosphere with uh, displace and array modifier. And in this case, it's a radial array creating a circle. And so if I turn off the show end result, you can see it's just a circle. And that circle is of stones is just parented to the main control object here. Next, what I'm doing is a data channel, and we'll cover that again uh, another section uh, as to why I'm using it. And we've got the conform modifier here. So conform is simply pointing towards the ground. Same sort of thing. It's pointing in Z, negative space. And I've taken the influence and kept the influence up at 100%. So it's, you know, allowing it to be uh, pushed up. And then there's the offset value too. So you want to offset it a little bit. We don't want them sit sitting, you know, right on top. I want them pushed in the ground a little bit. 
So all that's happening now is with both those and these little bits of grass that are also on a radial array, is that when I move this, it's moving the uh, point at the bottom, which is settling the entire uh, you know, silo into the ground. And then the, you know, the, the rocks and the bits of grass are just being conformed onto the ground around it. And that's allowing for a really nice solution to happen. And there you can actually see that the ground is changing uh, when I move it up and down and the, that bottom tube object is no longer colliding. So you can see the, everything is interacting with it. Now, something else I did over here was a little bit different. Instead of, you know, uh, putting the dirt spot onto the uh, ground here, this is an actual separate object. Now, this is just a geosphere again, believe it or not. And I sliced it and I used an X-form to flatten it. So it's procedural so I could flatten it or not. Threw a noise on it in the uh, X and Y just to make it some odd shape so it's not round. I volume selected it from the, uh, the center with a box uh, with this area here and you know with vertices with a soft selection so I could throw some more noise on it in places, a little bit of mesh select just to, uh, or mesh select to turn off the selection. I had to unwrap it. I threw a texture just from the top on this one now. It's not using the triplanar. And I did a conform, it conformed it down. So it too is just parented up to the main control object that is handling the uh, entire outhouse. And it's being projected down. So are the rocks. They're being projected down as well into the ground, but it's also colliding with this dirt pile and the ground circle as well. Now to get this dirt pile to fade in nicely and look like it's not just sort of a hard edge, what I used in the shader for this was the triplanar. Sorry, I used that on it for the ground, but I needed to be able to map the, the, the edges so that when the edges connect that they go transparent. So same kind of idea as I did before. I'm using a map channel here too and I have uh, the components, the, the red channel, and I'm using those both uh, for dr driving bump and a cutout map, and there's, there's where it's really happening. So when I close this down and I let the, uh, turn off the data channel, you'll now notice that you can see the edge, it is, it's no longer there. Or if I did it the other way around, turned off the conform, you can see it's probably gonna do something really strange for us. So when it conforms down, those vertices are hitting the ground. And you can see that I have a little bit of, uh, oh, no offset, but I've got some influence in there, you know, a little bit of fall off in there you can play around with. And it is currently set to volume and negative Z again. And with the data channel, what I'm doing is, is I'm taking the conform and I'm taking the selection that's being created by it. So it's throwing out a selection where it has collided. And then the data channel is going and taking that uh, vertex selection. I'm throwing a curve control on it so I can curve how it falls off from the center of it. And I've got a vertex output that I'm using and I'm outputting that data into the map channel two. So the X or the R in this case, so that I can use that as a cutout map to make the edge transparent like this. And it looks like it's sitting on the ground. So that's a couple of the ways that I'm going about getting things to collide. I'm doing it with a lot of the objects in the scene. Things like all of the small rocks are being done. They're being projected down from splines like I showed before. I have the Anukshuk that is also being pushed to the ground the same way the boxes are. So we can take it and move it around. It's just that I'm not using the rotation of it because I wanted it to stay pointing up all the time. The bridge is also using it, but I'll cover that in a more detailed breakdown of how I actually created the bridge. But the bridge is also using the same methods so that at any point in time, I can move that bridge around and it all sticks to the ground. So we'll cover that next and take a look at the specifics that I did with that to be able to make it to work.